call a recess meeting to order June the 17th. Uh, go ahead, James, take off. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, item number two on the agenda. This is department head reports. This agenda item is for information. Uh, the reports will not be read out here as we don't have the opportunity <coughs> for, the, uh, for the department heads to make presentations. Yes, thank, uh, thank you. Um, the town clerk has notified us we do need to do, for, because we're having folks on audio, we need to go and do a roll call vote so we can uh, verify that a quorum's been established. So we, and so what we have present here, we'll start with uh, Mayor Owens. I'm here. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Selby. Here. Commissioner Burke. Present. Commissioner Borland. Here. Commissioner Walker. Here. Commissioner Collins. Yeah. And Commissioner Mann. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you have a full attendance of the meeting and the town clerk can go ahead and record that uh, for the record. Thank you. Thank you. On the department head reports for the members of the public, if they go to the townofmanio.com website, they'll see written reports from um, all the departments here in the town. Uh, we won't go through each of those here for the sake of time, but please uh, feel free to go ahead and peruse those those written documents, again, at townofmanio.com. Uh, Mr. Mayor, item number three on the agenda. This is a presentation. This item is for information. Um, we're uh, pleased to announce uh, Ms. Michelle Lewis will be giving a presentation on the community garden concept, and we'll be getting some assistance from our facilitator, uh, Carl Woody, as we go ahead and link up with Ms. Lewis via Zoom. All right. Uh, hi. Hello, everybody. Um, hey, Michelle. Hey, I'm trying to a, a screen share, and it says that I've, it's been disabled. Um, but so the Peace Garden Project started. So my name is Michelle Lewis. I am from Manio, um, and the Peace Garden Project started back when I was living in New York. And I was, actually, I was in Connecticut and in graduate school at Yale University. And while I was in school, there, there was, um, I was, I had received money to do my research for the summer and I was working a job, but I was still paying a mortgage on a house in Atlanta where I'd moved from. I was paying for my apartment. I was paying um, for my car. And when it came down to it after my bills were paid, I was struggling. I was struggling and the thing that I was, um, you know, was debating like, how do I buy groceries? You know, what's going to be the means to get the healthiest food? And a friend of mine suggested that I actually go try to get on public assistance. And I went, I, I did, I, I, I went down, attempted to get on public assistance. And the lady that I met with that day told me that I made $50 too much money. She suggested I either work fewer hours or quit my job. And, and, and then her next recommendation was that she asked me if I had any kids and said, well, you could have a baby. And I was just like, wow, there's got to be another way to help um, people who were working really hard, who were just kind of falling between the cracks. And so that summer, I actually taught some of the kids that I was working with, uh, doing my research, how to grow food. And out of that came the Peace Garden Project. And so we say we don't just grow healthy food, we grow healthy community. And the, the project was actually fully got underway when I was in New Rochelle, New York. And in that community, um, uh, the church that I pastored at the time sat in the middle of a, not uh, in a not very diverse part of town, it sat in the middle of a, a Jewish part of the community and had a very difficult time with its neighbors um, but then we started planting gardens, and what we saw was that the community was transformed through the gardens that we were planting. And so I actually, I workshopped this project through the Harvard Kennedy School, uh, through the work I did at Yale University, and then through my doctoral work at Emory. And we, so we've seen that we don't just, we're not able to just grow healthy food, we also grow healthy community. And, and so we've started gardens here in Mania. We've got three gardens in Westchester County, New York. And we've got six gardens underway here on Roanoke Island. So we've partnered with local people and local homeowners and, and business owners in the community who just had extra property. 
And so we've been turning over ground, we've been planting seeds. And one of the things that's really important to us in the Peace Garden Project is that we work together. So it's not community gardens in the traditional sense where you go, you get your plot, you work the land, whatever you grow is yours. It's gardening in the sense that we invite people into the space to grow food together, uh, to eat together, we're not coronavirus season. Uh, and then the food goes to communities and it goes to community soup kitchens, shelters, uh, families in need. Uh, Cause what we're trying to do is eradicate the shame around food insecurity and 21% uh, of people in Dare County are food insecure. And so what that means is that there's some portion of the month where there's lack of avail available financial resources for food at the household level. And 21% is a lot for one of the wealthiest counties in North Carolina. And we try to eradicate the shame around that food insecurity. So we don't make people fill out waivers to prove that they're poor to get food. If people show up and it's a harvest day and they want a share of food and we have enough, we just give them food. Um, and so we are kind of working on a model so it becomes income generating in some ways, but, but that's, that's been our model and we found that it works really well. And we are a 501c3, so we are federally recognized as a nonprofit. And we received, the really exciting thing is we did receive a grant from the Conservation Fund this year to run a Youth Leadership Institute. And our Youth Leadership Institute started this past Monday. We've got eight students that we're working with from Manio. And it's a nice cross section of students. Some, uh, we've got some Latino students, we've got white students, we've got black students, and we're teaching them leadership skills and also teaching them how to grow food. And there is a spirituality component that, um, that they can opt into. So the folks who've said, you know, we're not comfortable talking about spirituality and faith, we leave that out. And the people who want to do that, we do engage those conversations, not forcing a belief system on anyone, but helping people experience the environment and growing food through their own um, spiritual belief system and their own spiritual practice. So again, I told you um, our mission is that we don't just grow healthy food, we grow healthy community. And we do actively work against the isms and the phobias that are present in the world. So we do workshops on racism, on immigration, on xenophobia. We have hosted workshops to help people understand human sexuality because we think that part of a uh, huge part of the problems that we experience in society are just due to lack of understanding about our neighbors and who our neighbors are. So these are pictures that were taken in our gardens. Uh, and these are all people who are still very active with our garden projects, both in New York. And uh, these are all folks from New York, but we do have kind of a cohort of people that we've started uh, working with here in North Carolina that we're really excited about. Uh, we have started planting, I shared with you already, and um, that we have started planting the gardens in North Carolina. And this is a picture from one of our harvest days. And just to show you who are, some of who our board of directors are, we have a rabbi on our board of directors. Uh, this woman in the, in the middle, uh, Ima Otto During, she was one of our first interns and she now sits on our board. Susan Lee, who some of you may know, who uh, worked for a long time in the Dare County School System and now works on the Resiliency um, Project here on the Outer Banks is also one of our board members. And then we have an attorney on our board also as well. And uh, Doris Clark McGuire is a master gardener who sits on our board too. So we worked really hard to create a diverse board that was representative of a community, not just in New York, but also here in North Carolina. So. Um, uh, the students who are part of our leadership institute this summer, they are, they are, they do get a stipend, an education stipend that they receive. They're receiving anywhere between one and two hundred dollars uh, per week for the work that they're doing in the gardens, and uh, the, and gardens have a number of benefits that include building self-esteem. Working the gardens uh, have proved in just a garden period can, has proved to be good for your overall heart health and well-being, good for mental health and areas where there's crime. I know that's not a huge issue in this area, but gardens have also been shown to reduce the crime rate as well. And for our, our summer institute, so it takes about $800 a student to like, sponsor a student through our youth summer programming. We had so many students apply that we actually had to turn students away uh, because we didn't have enough money to fund all the students who wanted to be a part of the Youth Leadership Institute this summer. So uh, workshops coming up, we do have a workshop coming up at the end of 
uh, uh, actually on July 1st, it's peace building strategies, and which I think is especially important due to the kind of the present national climate that's going on. So how do we build peace in our communities? How do we, you know, talk about race, which are things that we're teaching the students who are part of the Institute to do as well. You know, thinking through these problems, these larger problems that we haven't always engaged in our communities. And then July 5th and August 2nd, uh, we've have two students from Duke University that are working with us this summer as virtual interns. We hope that they'll make it here in person who are, who are putting it together a workshop uh, all about understanding the prison industrial complex. So how does, you know, the incarceration rate, does it reflect your community or not? And in those instances where the incarcerate being the rate of incarceration doesn't reflect the community, what does that mean? And how can we work together uh, to ensure equity across, um, across systems and lines of difference um, in, you know, and in this community too. So that's just a little bit about, that's kind of like the quick, uh, what we're about and what we do, because I did want to leave a, a couple of minutes for questions, if there are any questions. Michelle, this is uh, Christine Walker. I, I just love um, the whole con your whole concept. I mean, it just sounds amazing. Um, and I just wanted to ask how, how we can um, get the word out about what you're doing. Um, I mean, are y'all on social media or is there a website or, you know, what, how, how can we let people know more about what you're doing? All right, so this is our website. We do have a Facebook page. Uh, Facebook page okay. isn't as active. We've got a um, Instagram page now. And so the, okay. the project started four years ago. And when I returned home, I did, I did um, you know, I registered in North Carolina and all that. And we finally got our nonprofit status, which was really important for us because we think it's important for, we do think it's important for people. So just let people know. Uh, let people know, say, hey, there's this kind of cool thing that's going on or this really interesting thing that's going on where, you know, they're growing food. And so we, when we started out, we didn't start out to be a land holder. The thing that we started out to <laughs> do to really help people in their own communities do this work and get the system running. And then we helped to fund interns and workshops and that sort of thing, because we really do want gardens to be self-sustaining in the communities where they are. So this is our fourth growing season now. And in the last four years, we've grown almost a ton of food that have gone to people in need. Amazing. It's that you're doing great, great service. I'm, it's just wonderful to hear. Michelle. So if you know, and so like one of the other things is if you know somebody that's got land that they're not using, uh, you know, because a lot of people own property here that just sits vacant. They can always, you know, contact us. And if they're willing to let us grow on it, um, they could enter into an agreement with us where we can grow on their property. Because, you know, the more gardens we have, the more youth we'll be able to engage, the more families we'll be able to feed. And because the thing about pantries is they often get produce, but the produce that they have is usually, it's almost never the freshest stuff, right? Because grocery stores sell that. And so the produce that they get at pantry is always at the end of its life. And, you know, sometimes by the time people get it to take it home, it's, you know, if they don't need it that day, they've got to throw it in the trash. So. Yeah. Michelle. Yes. Betty Selby. The grant that you have received, is that specifically for Manio? And does it cover the eight students that's attending Right. Yes, ma'am. So the grant that we've received is specifically for Dare County and for Manio, for kids in Manio. And it almost covers the students that we've got. Uh, we did raise some money through a mask project that we've had going on since coronavirus started, where we've been, we've got a handful of people who've been making masks that we just accept donations for in the community, but then outside of Dare County, uh, we charge for those. We route people through a website. Uh, so we did raise some money for the gardens here in um, here in North Carolina through that project. And generally what we've done is the money that's raised in a community stays in that community. So we got a $20,000 grant for the New York gardens. And all that money has stayed with those gardens in New York. 
And so we don't, you know, we don't shuffle money around to try to, to make it work in a community. Our goal really is to make the gardens work in the communities where they are, so. But you do accept sponsorships for students, right? Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. If somebody wanted to sponsor a student, uh, we would graciously accept that, <laughs> that donation and it would be tax deductible. So. Uh, Michelle, let's just know, how many kids do you have in your program and uh, what's the diversity of the kids? So we have eight kids in the program right now. We have uh, three Latino youth. We accepted four and one didn't show up for orientation and we haven't heard back from. We've got two African-American students. There are two more who are sending applications who actually I ran into their parents today and said, Oh, we still want to send you an application. And there are four white students. That's great. And, and two others, two other white students that we have accepted into the program, but we're going to have to run a second cohort and raise money for those students because we don't want to accept a student and, and not have the money to be able to um, to give them the stipend, we you know we'd rather accept them in and know that there, the money is there to give them the stipend. So, what's the age group, Michelle? So the students are ages twelve through eighteen. So uh, five of the students are high schoolers. Three are in middle school, and I say five are high schoolers. One is graduated, so she's our lead student this summer. Uh, she wants to be a, a veterinarian, and one of our growing areas is located at um, Beachland Farm. So she's, we've arranged for her to have some experience working with the farm animals to help prepare her for, uh, for college and going into um, the veterinary program that she wants to, um, to study as she starts studying to be a, a veterinarian. Thank you. Yeah, we really do try to make the internships and their experiences meaningful for them and for what their long range career goals are, if they know what they are. And if they're not sure about what their long range career goals are, which, you know, for a middle schooler, um, they're probably not sure at this point, but we want to give them enough experience and help them build their leadership skills to a degree so that they can stand up in front of folks and give a speech. Um, they, you know, that they are seen as a leader in the community and in their schools. Hmm. Great job. Great job. All right. Were there, were there any other questions? Not here. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Bye bye. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we, uh, that, that concludes the presentation on Community Gardens by Michelle Lewis. For our listening public, um, there were no slides presented. However, we want to make sure you can see the website that has been shared with us. So for more information, go to peacegardenproject.net. That's peacegardenproject.net. Mr. Mayor, if I will go on to the next one, item number four. Thank you, sir. Item number four on the agenda. This is for information. This is a public hearing to receive comments for text, text amendment to section 12-7 of the zoning ordinance regarding boat lifts. Again, this is for information. The Board of Commissioners um, will not be able to take action on this tonight because the new state law requires an additional 24 hours after the public hearing to receive written comments from the general public. However, the action the board would be required to take is uh, the, to opening the motions to open and close the public hearing. I move to uh, open public hearing on section 12.7 on zoning code for boat lifts. Why is it second? I second. Motion by Jason to go into public hearing in regards to boat lift. Second by Barry Shelby. All in favor? Yes, sir. If you'd like, I'd go ahead and take the roll call, yeah. sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Shelby, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? 
Aye. Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's a unanim unanimous vote to open the public hearing on right. Section 12.7. We now declare ourselves in uh, public hearing in regards to the vote list. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll have the opportunity for the public to, to jump in for their public comments. I can acknowledge that we have three written comments that were received before the meeting. And it's all right, Mr. Mayor, I'll read them into the record yeah. so they've been received. Thank you, sir. Um, the first of three, this is uh, from Mr. Clint Hepler. I believe Mr. Hepler is over on Devon Street. The, the statement is, I can't attend the town commissioner's meeting tonight, but I'd like to voice favorably for allowing marinas to have boat lifts, just like they are allowed at private docks. A boat small enough to use a lift would not block people's views any more than the flying bridges on larger boats or the masts on sailboats. Don't understand why the planning troops voted to turn them down. That was number one. Who was that from? That was from Mr. Clint Hepler. Where's his address? De Devon Street, sir. Next one is from Mr. Bob Keeney, uh, Fernando Street. This one says, I am in support of deleting the section of Ordinance 12-7 that pertains to boat lifts and marinas. The Planning and Zoning Board at their last meeting found that boat lifts and marinas are inconsistent with the town scale policies, policy three in the 2007 land use plan because they do not, quote, preserve views in public trust waters, end quote. It is important to note that boat lifts are not specifically addressed anywhere in the land use plan. However, town staff believes that policy three applies. Although I fully support policy three of the land use plan, I don't believe it is being applied correctly as it pertains to this ordinance. The current ordinance restricts the use of boat lifts only in marinas. A boat lift itself does not restrict visibility at all. Only when a boat is on a boat lift could it have some impact on views of public waters. But no more so than large boats that are not restricted by a town ordinance and are docked in marinas and private docks throughout the town. Large boats and boats on lifts should be treated the same. Neither one materially restricts views of public waters. Owners of boat slips in private marinas who have spent tens of thousands of dollars on boat slips should be able to fully utilize them in accordance with any covenants or policies of each private marina. By deleting this portion of the ordinance, those marina associations on behalf of their tax paying members will be able to determine the proper location and installation of boat lifts in their facilities. Marsh's light marina boat slips are subject to substantial wind and waves that make docking a difficult situation. A wave attenuator has been proposed but has been opposed in the past by some in the town and might never be constructed. Allowing boat lifts will greatly improve the use of this important Manio amenity. Thank you for your time and consideration of my comments. That was number two. And number three comes from Tracy Pava and at uh, Owen Dartmoor Avenue. And says, I am a full-time resident of Manio living at 103 Dartmoor Avenue. In addition to my home, I own a Marsh's Light Marina boat slip, number eight, which lies directly behind my house. I support deletion of the language in Ordinance 12-7, which prohibits boat lifts and marinas. While I understand the current restriction stems from the desire to preserve the views of public waters, it is curious that the prohibition only applies to boat lifts in marinas. Slip owners in established marinas are affected by the ordinance, whereas property owners in other waterfront locations are not. Our manual marinas are surrounded by tall buildings and large ocean going boats are permitted to dock in them. I contend that these buildings and large boats are far more likely to obstruct the water views than a few small boats on lifts. I am interested in purchasing a boat lift so I may fully utilize my property and enjoy boating on the sound waters. I own a small boat and have found it exceedingly difficult to move it in and out of my marina slip due to weather slash water conditions, even in the summer months. A boat lift would significantly aid that process. I must also take my boat out of the water in the winter months and I incur a significant expense to store it on a trailer at an offsite location. The Marsh's Light Marina lacks protection and today it sits almost completely empty. Owners of large boats are not going to jeopardize their investments by docking in a marina where the boats are likely to be damaged. That situation is unlikely to change until slash unless a wave attenuator is constructed. For small boat owners, only a few slips are even usable given the distance between the water and the boardwalk. If boat lifts were permissible, more small boat owners might be able to use the Marsh's Light Marina. I believe Manio would benefit in if all its marinas were bustling, and I remain, remain hopeful that town leadership is interested in that outcome and actively seeking solutions. 
Again, I support a change in Ordinance 12-7, which would allow boat lifts in marinas. I also believe the respective marina associations are best suited to govern the specifics of boat lift type, installation, and maintenance. Thank you for your, this opportunity to provide input. And that concludes the three written comments we've received, Mr. Mayor. If it's all right with you, I'll ask our facilitator to help us with phone-in comments. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Carl Woody will assist us. Members of the members of the public are invited to participate in the public hearing. Uh, on your phone, if you uh, if you hit star nine on your phone, it will virtually raise your hand, and we'll look up on the screen to see if anybody would like to speak. If we see your hand raised, we'll call you out by the last four digits of your phone number. We're currently showing six attendee, six attendees listening into the phone call. So far, nobody has raised their hand. So if you are interested in commenting on boat lifts and marinas, uh, please hit star nine on your phone and your hand will be raised. Seeing no hands raised, we'll, we'll just try. Oh, now we do have our first hand raised. This is, and this last, the last four digits of this number are 4640. So caller, our facilitator will open you up, unmute your phone, and if you wouldn't mind, if you could identify yourself and your location and uh, make your make your voices heard. My name is Tim Teeple. I live at 101 Fernando Street. Um, I am talking today about lifting the boat ordinances for Marsh's Light and for marinas around the area. As I stated with the planning board, I do not have an issue with the boat lifts, as most people do, with obstructing the view, even though I do walk on the boardwalks every single day. And it would make a difference if you go over to Marsh's Light and walk on their docks and you notice all the boat lifts whenever they are up, it does distract the view. And I don't know why we would want to distract the view of such a beautiful marina that we have since we do have a great town that has two water features, such as the Elizabeth II and the wonderful Roanoke Marshes Lighthouse. Boat lifts also give a false sense of security. Knowing firsthand from one of the storms that we had that a owner did not pull their boat off of a boat slip for one of the properties that I work for. The boat pulled away out of the lift and smashed into the dock, causing major damage the a crane had to come and tow the boat away and also for the dock to be repaired. Yes, this is, was just only one owner's dock. Can you imagine what happens in a marina that a boat does not get taken off the boat lift during a major storm? If this does pass, I hope that there is an ordinance that requires all boats to be removed from boat lifts so then this does not happen. Also, changing an ordinance is a huge thing. There has been a reason why it has been in the town of Manio. This also opens it up for other arenas as well, Shallowback Bay, Marsh's Light, and also downtown Manio. I have been told that it does not affect downtown Manio, but it does give more leeway. It also goes against the land use permit, and you're opening up the land use permit even more. And for an area that we are trying to keep the land use, such as Saga, even though it has been opened up to allow the townhouses or allow the houses when there were supposed to be condos, I don't believe the land use needs to be changed or the ordinance. Therefore, I am in support of a breakwater system that is also part of the land use area. I know firsthand by walking on there that the boats do get beat up. And it would be great, as in whenever Marsh's Light did get constructed, it was in their ordinance or, in, or it was in their lane use to create a breakwater system. And it does need to be done. If I was a homeowner at Marsh's Light, I would go to the organization to find out why it hasn't been done. After all, why would we worry, why are these homeowners only worried about themselves instead of the whole marina? If all the boat owners could get along, and all get together, then create a breakwater system, therefore protecting the whole marina instead of just one certain individual who's allowed to buy or can afford a boat lift. 
I hope that you listened to the planning board and what they recommended. Hal Goodman, I know, for example, gave a great presentation and also had pictures of what boat lifts do look like and how it does obstruct the view. This is a view of Manio. It is a view of when people bought into Marsh's Light, they knew what they were getting. After all, when Marsh's Light was built, it was to build, it was to join Old Town Manio with New Town, meaning Marsh's Light. And it was supposed to keep up with the boardwalk. After all, Manio is famously known for having one of the longest boardwalks in North Carolina. Why would we destruct that view for individuals so sometime in the near future, I hope when Marsh's Light gets what they're supposed to get, as in retail shops and areas where people can come around and it will join the old and the new of Manio. And I thank you, board, very much for hearing me out. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. All right, as we look up as we look up on the screen, we'll see if anybody else wants to make a public comment. So any other attendees uh, going by the phone, if you'd hit star nine to raise your hand to have an opportunity to speak during the public hearing. And we don't see anybody raising their hand, star, uh, star nine. All right, would anybody else like to be heard? All right, here nobody, we will close the public comment period. Great. Thank you, sir. If it's all if it's all right with you, Mr. Mayor, um, would it be okay if we go ahead and did uh, did the motion second and a roll call on that? So for our viewing public, sir. Would that be okay? To what now? Yeah, it would be okay. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. It would be okay if we go ahead and had the motion and uh, and a second and a vote so we can close that so the, the members of the public can hear. This is on the public here. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Motion to close public hearing. This is Darrell. Who, who's second? Who's second? Darrell. Darrell. Jason seconded by Darrell to close public hearing as to uh, vote list. Yes, sir. All in favor? Get your roll call. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby? Aye. Um, Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, I or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. All right, we'll now declare a public hearing boat list uh, closed. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Item number five on the agenda is for information. I will go ahead, if it's all right, I will go ahead and give the instructions for the public before we open it up. The members of the public are invited to address the Board of Commissioners on any topic. Public comment is not intended to require the Board to answer any impromptu questions or to take any action on items brought up during the public comment period. Speakers will address all the comments to the Board as a whole and not one individual Commissioner. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Time limits are three minutes per person and five minutes per group. Please identify yourself and your location so that your statements can be recorded. So for members of the public, it's just like the public hearing. If you want to make a public comment, uh, please hit star nine on your phone and we will look at the screen to see if your hand's been raised. At present, we don't see anybody who's raised their hand to make a public comment. Um, if you are interested in doing so, please hit star nine on your phone and we will look at the screen. If anybody's interested in making a public comment, please hit star nine and we will be looking for you. All right, would anybody else like to be heard? We'll now close the public comment period. Thank you, sir. Next up on the agenda, this is item number six. This is for action. 
Item number 6A is adoption of the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget ordinance. If I may, a few, few quick notes before the board considers this. First, and uh, this, this budget had been uh, presented to the pub public last month and it was a public hearing two weeks ago. In accordance with state law, or the new state law, we did allow an additional 24 hours for written comments to be submitted. However, none were received. Uh, in the budget ordinance before you, there were just a couple of typos corrected, but there were no changes in any of the appropriations uh, or, line, or, or those, those items <laughs> there. So at this point, up for consideration by the board is that fiscal 2021 20, budget. All right, now all we do, we're, we, we go ahead and adopt budget tonight, don't we? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, what, should we go right on into? <clears throat> yes, sir, if you'd, if you'd like, if, if, uh, if there's a motion and a second, and then perhaps uh, the, there may be discussion by members of the board, okay. of course. All right, can we have a motion to uh, adopt the fiscal year 2021 budget? This is Richie, I'll make a motion to approve the budget. Okay, motion by Richie, second. I'll second. Second by Jason. Uh, there's been a motion. Was that somebody coming in? I hear something. Hey, we've had a motion and second on adoption of the 2021 year budget. All in favor? It, Take a roll call. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll start with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, Iron A. Go to Commissioner Burke, I or nay. Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay. Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay. Aye. Uh. Commissioner Walker, I or nay. Aye. And Commissioner Mann, I or nay. Aye. All right. So, uh, um, Mr. Mayor, the uh, the budget ordinance for fiscal year 2020 to 2021 uh, uh, has been approved. All right. Stand approved, and we've approved the budget. Yes, sir. Let's move on. Great. Thank you, sir. Item number seven, new business. This is for action. So item 7A is, is actually, it's the, we're approaching the end of the fiscal year. This is, this is only budget amendment number two. But this, one, this one's important because in prior years, there was a separate dock fund, separate from the general fund, separate from the water and sewer enterprise fund, and separate from the cemetery fund. Now the dock fund this year had two things that hit it. Number one, a reduction in revenues uh, due to uh, COVID-19. So when the marina had to be, and Dare, when Dare County was closed down, we saw reduced revenues. The second thing that happened is there were unexpected expenses due to Hurricane Dorian. Now, of course, we've applied for FEMA reimbursement, but those costs had to be paid. And they also hit the DOC fund. Um, so in this particular case, we want to, we are obliged to make sure this fund doesn't end up in the red because then the local government commission will, that will hit our audit report and we want to make sure we have enough money in there before the end of the fiscal year so it doesn't hit us in the red. Um, so that's why we're asking for this budget amendment, but any unused dollars would then be returned back to the fund balance should they not be necessary. But this is just a safety net for us and it's our last chance to do so given this is the last meeting of the current fiscal year. We have to have a vote on that. Yes, sir. All right, I don't know what you're asking for, but uh, go ahead and word it. Yes, sir. So in this case, we would, we would be uh, hoping for a motion to approve budget amendment number two as presented. All right. Uh, you've heard from the town manager. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve budget amendment number two as presented. Okay, second. This is... Commissioner Walker, I'll second. All right. Uh, motion's been made by Rick and seconded by Christine that we uh, approve the budget amendment as presented by the town manager. All in favor, take a roll call. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. Uh. Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. The, the motion passes. Aye, the motion carries the adoption of the uh, 
amended budget as you presented. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So next up on the agenda, this is for information. This is a section for mayor and commissioner's comments. Well, I wasn't, but I am. Uh, first, I do not have a vote, but I am for the boat Davids and uh, the boat lifts. Let me go on record to saying that even though I don't have a boat. Uh, I see nothing wrong with them because they, if anybody lived around the water all their life, they know it's for protection of the boat and they can get it out of the water. I don't have any problems with the planning board's boat. But I do have, find it a little ironic that the past mayor made the motion and yet he was a previous mayor when they built a boat house in the middle of Shallowbag Bay, right north of uh, uh, Cormay Bass Night Bridge. You go across the bridge, the whole view from the north is blocked. You can't see anything. And yet he's against the boat Davids, but he was for and he supported the boat house that's there now. I'm a little confused. He seems to be confused. But uh, it is what it is, and I just want to say my piece. I'm done. I'm done. Ready? Oh, okay, my comments is um, I hope that we find a way to support or help or engage in the Peace Gardens. I think that's an awesome uh, presentation Dr. Lewis made. And that's all my comments. Reggie? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Jason? Um, oh, yeah, I knew I wrote something down, but I couldn't even read my own handwriting. <laughs> this is our first get together since the uh, um, peaceful demonstration there. And, and it was a great event, and I wanted to thank the town and the police and everybody. Um, besides one, one drunk stumbling by, you know, it was a. Uh, um, pretty uneventful from anything negative there. Um, and then, uh, of course, I was very impressed with, with Commissioner Collins as well uh, and his speech. And I thought he did fantastic, so I wanted to mention that. And I uh, look forward to uh, talking about the, the boat lifts further uh, before and then our, our next meeting. So that's all I got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, we do have that property down on Sir Walter Raleigh. It's not sold. Maybe we can let the, the Peace Garden use that for a while. Uh, if that's all right with the board. And I, I agree with Jason. It was a, it was a, a great event, peaceful event. I was surprised by the number of people who showed up, uh, but it was it was great. And I'm glad that it was done in Tasmania. That's it. Christine? Um, that's a great idea, Daryl, about the property on Sir Walter Raleigh. I mean, if, if that, you know, if we can work that out uh, for, for Michelle and, and the Peace Garden, I think that is a great idea, whatever we can do to help them. It's, I mean, it's just an amazing project that they're doing, and... Um, you know, especially during these times, you know, uncertain times for families. And, um, you know, like she said, with her only being, you know, $50 shy of, of the guidelines for receiving assistance, you know, there's a lot of people there on that line that fall between the cracks and, you know, whatever we can do to help her in that project, I think would be great. Um, I don't have any other comments. Um, otherwise, thank you. Okay, thank you, Christine. Eddie Mann, the pride of marine fisheries. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, I uh, I want to thank uh, the Dare Minority Coalition, um, the town of Manio, uh, Kitty Hawk, Kettle Hills, Southern Shores, Nags Head, the county. They all had representatives here for the uh, for the I, I'd call it a peaceful demonstration. It wasn't a uh, a protest. I've seen more protests at my Thanksgiving dinner. So um, 
it was a it was a peaceful demonstration. I appreciate everybody showing up, and I had two people uh, tell me before uh, the demonstration that they were, they were glad they didn't live in the the town of Manio because of that protest. And I thought about that, and I thought, you know, the town of Manio was for friendship, neighborhood, unity, and understanding. And if that appeals to people, then the town of Manio is the place for you. And if it doesn't then this isn't the place for you. So I'm glad that it could be held here, and I'm glad it was such a uh, j just a fantastic event, and I was proud to go to it. Thank you. That was well said, Mr. Man. All right, anything else come for the board? Okay, we re we adjourn. Until the yes, sir. Yes, sir. Meeting. Uh, item number nine on the agenda is the adjournment, um, uh, obviously with a, with a vote motion, uh, but in the next meeting will be on July 1st, Wednesday, July 1st at 6.30 p.m. At what time? Uh, uh, July 1st at 6.30 p.m. 2.30? 6.30. I'm oh, sorry. 6.30 p.m., sir. That's why I couldn't hear you. <laughs> what did that to me, Bobby? This is now our, our motion to adjourn. Oh, yes, all sir. this stuff going on is confusing. <laughs> yes, uh, sir. All right. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Yes, sir. I think I, I think I have a motion to adjourn. All right. Motion is second that we adjourn until July the 1st at 6 30. All yes. right. All in favor? You got to take a roll call. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem Selby, Iron A. Aye. Commissioner Burke, Iron A. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Walker, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. All right, we stand adjourned.